Mod Block Magazine volume number four is all about scale. So this fun free piece log cabin is my approach to play with scale in both design and in quilting. Let's get started. Like many a great quilt, this design actually started from the fabric line itself. So I got very excited when I saw that Moda was putting out some of their color box basics in a whole two and a half inch strip roll. I would love to show you that right now, but I already cut into it. I couldn't wait. I dove into it in making the second half of the quilt. So you do need a two and a half inch strip jelly roll from Moda with these great color box. They're like a low volume neutral and they're radical. I'm gonna call them print from here on out in the video. And then the other thing you need is about six different solids. These are also from Moda. And I chose a, a scale from gray all the way down into the yellows. Um, and then I have quarter yards of the red and the pink you see behind me. I have half yards of the other colors, the blues, the greens, the grays, the purple, that kind of stuff. They're all cut down into two and a half inch strips. And then because I did have a little bit of extra because I was working from my yardage, I also have about a one and a half inch strip. We free piece our construction in making these blocks. What does free piecing mean? Well, a couple of different approaches. Check out this square here. When it's free pieced, it has a bit of a wonky or not so squared out effect. And in building this, what I like to do is our traditional log cabin. So I'm gonna start with my fireplace, the warmth in the heart, right? And that is my red or my pink centers. And then I'm gonna grow my solids in one direction and my prints in the other. I actually build these two different ways. I build them with my darker solids on the center here like you see and I also build them like this with my lighter solids off of the center as you see. Neither of these did I concern myself too much with which of the different prints I was using in which order but as I did unpack my entire roll I did keep them in kind of color family. So if you see this right here you'll notice it's kind of got a creamier background so I worked with these often as a creamy background and if you'll follow me over to my design wall I've got a bunch of these strips laid out. Check this out it's really cool. I'm loving my new design wall here at Man Sewing, and we were just talking about the cream colored backgrounds, and I want to point out here, this is more of that grayed background in my prints, and here I've got a very nice bright background in the prints, and then again, you also see my solids, and I keep my solids constantly laid out in order, from the gray to my purple to my blue, all the way through to the yellow. And then my pink is an optional centerpiece, but the red I use on almost all my squares, so let's get this back onto the table here and get ready to start building out our first block. That's right, we're doing traditional construction, meaning that every good log cabin piece or part, or we'll call it a wall for now, because we're gonna need four of them for each complete section, starts with that warmth of the home or the fireplace is kind of the tradition as I've been told. So I'm starting with my red, like I said, sometimes pink, you can see that behind me. And the measurements really are not important to me here, but I am gonna to try to make straight cuts and I am going to try to use the full strips. So I will still use a ruler. It also protects my hand. But just to point out, you can see that this is not a perfectly straight cut. And I'm gonna cut it here. And I was also saying that I use the full width of the strips when I'm building because I wanna be able to use scraps. So I had also been starting earlier on and so I have a yellow piece that I'll add to this red. But I need to think a little bit further down the road of construction here because there's one more thing I didn't point out for all of us, and that is this. In every big log cabin where I have four individual parts coming together, I have two of each. So I have two of these where I have my fabrics, my solids traveling from my dark out to my light. See, there's two of those, just like that. And what we're gonna build right now is the second version of this one because I wanna have a second one where the lights go to the dark. And if you look really carefully, each of these are constructed in the same rotation. Therefore, <laughs> when I start this one, I'm thinking to myself, no matter where I start, okay, here's my red. That means my yellow scrap is gonna sew on right here in this orientation. So I'm gonna go right sides together. <laughs> okay, now as I just go with these right sides together over here to the machine, I am going to use a quarter inch seam allowance for all my piecing, but I am using a shorter stitch length. I'm doing a 2.0 stitch length, and that just helps secure stuff. So as I sew it, I feel comfortable to trim and piece on as I go. And after every seam I sew, I also come back to my ironing station and I just take my iron and I slide it in and I'm just pressing, building outward. Now, Funny enough, when I'm using a scrap, I will press after I sew. 
If I'm using a full piece, like I'll show you here in a second, I press um, after I cut. A little different, but it maximizes the scrap. So first thing is let's stay organized. I'm going to take the red, I'm going to put it back over here on my design wall. I had added the yellow on from a scrap, but now I want to use my green piece as a full piece, okay, and just to make sure my orientation, once I get the three pieces together, then everything just circles around the, the fireplace. So I'm going to bring this back here like this, and that means that I need to have my green piece stitch on right there. At this point here, back to my sewing machine. And you can see I've cheated a little bit on both directions because I'm not doing straight piecing, so therefore I might have angles going in all kinds of wonky, purposeful directions. So I'm going to have a little bit of a cheat that I'll show you here. Now, that's the cheat I was talking about where you see the green pass the red a ways. And that way, if I were to open this up, everything's working along the nice angle that way. But the first thing I want to do is I want to take this piece down here. I'm going to protect myself, so I'm going to cut with the ruler, but I cut it straight that way because I have a shorter scrap now. Now I press, and what's really fun is you just build yourself a nice little rhythm where you're sewing, pressing, cutting, sewing, pressing, cutting, and it's really entertaining because every seam is unique in this style of work, but it is also um, kind of custom, and you get to kind of dream as you go through. Now, at this moment, I want to trim this down. Now, if I trim this, here because I want to and I will because that's what looks good to me. This is no longer a scrap. That just goes into the waste basket or the dog bed filler. But if I don't know what I want to do, then I'm going to shoot to cut this about in half. Because if I cut it in about half, then I have a good piece later. And again, I'm going to slightly twist my ruler or angle my ruler so this is not a squared cut anymore. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made the slice, but I've got my center and I have two solids. So the next one that's going to be put on will be a print. So in that case, because I want this to look very similar, I'm going to double check. I was using the gray backgrounds on this series of walls. So I'm going to slide that back out and I'm going to go on over saving that scrap. And I'm going to grab one of my blue gray background pieces from my design wall and I'm going to bring it right in here. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter of which of these two sides I start on, but it has to touch the red. Okay, so I'm going to just drop that in place. Sew it on like that. And because it was a full size piece, again, I'm going to go ahead and just trim it open this way. Press it here. And then I can come back in and I will, again, cut her down. This piece is starting to do some of this stuff, which is going to be really hard to sew a straight line to, right? If I brought this in right sides together right now, that would look weird. So what I like to do is I like to shave these down as needed. So I have a really nice line to sew to as I'm working. So right now I've cut off that kind of weird piece and I have another nice, nice straight line. And because I want to maximize constantly while I'm working, I went over to my scrap pile from the last blocks and I found another blue gray one and I'll put it in here. Now what that's doing for us visually is a couple of things is it's using the same shades, but it's changing the rotation of the print so it doesn't look so formula, so systematic. And in a free piece project, which I've been trying to study a little bit more about what is free piecing versus poor piecing, because <laughs> I think for a long time I was a poor piecer versus a free piecer, Free piecing is trying to add in elements of the unexpected. Maybe one of my log cabins wouldn't even be in the right uh, size format or something like that. If you, if you look in the quilt behind me while I'm pressing this out, you'll also see that I've used a lot of different variety and scale of the blocks and different things to try to bring in the uniqueness of it. And that's one of the things I do dig about free piecing is it's a little bit more fluid but you also want to take the time, as you see me doing here, to constantly be pressing and squaring and pressing and squaring because it makes the actual construction go together beautifully. Now, 
Next step, we have one of those series of walls put around our log cabin. Time for another series, but where is it going to go? Here's your trick. You see how this yellow piece here has been trapped between these other two walls? So I have a seam here and I have a seam here. So the next piece is going to go along here. It is going to be a solid and it will be the brighter of the two because it's going to go against the yellow. I run over to my design wall. Hey, let's not get carried away. Let's clean up as we go. Stay. <laughs> and so I'm bringing back in my turquoise. If I'm nervous, I've gotten it incorrect. I just double check there. And that's only because I'm trying to build something with some sort of consistency. Put it back on here. Sew it on. And keep on building. If you feel comfortable, you don't have to use the ruler, but you won't have a really straight cut and that will affect your piecing down the road. So I will trim it even if I just freely cut like that. I also like to use a variety of sizes in my strips. So I'm going to leave this one big because we're just playing. I'm just making this as we go. I'm also going to trim this down here because I have the tools in my hand. It'll help me later on a little bit. So the green is now trapped between those walls. So we're going to sew on this next piece here and it's going to be a solid again. So it'll be my blue. And here's the blue. And if I was, oh, what about this blue? Well, it's not going to fit across there. Doesn't mean I couldn't add something in there, but right now to make it easy, let's just grab another one of these pieces here and stitch it on. You may also notice that I'm sewing often with the strip against the feed dogs. That way I can see the actual folded or pressed seam allowance and I can control it. Sometimes I'm sewing up it, sometimes I'm sewing over it, but nonetheless, I can at least control the way it's folding. That also really helps with our construction or our tidiness in our block. Cut from the front of the back, but you can't really see where you're going. So then you cut really wide this way. There. And because I left the turquoise one a little bit wide, let's cut this blue one down. And one of the things I'm doing, hopefully you can see this, let's get this a little bit better centered for us today. Right now, as I'm making this evaluation, I'm actually looking at the line across the bottom of the block. Because as I do that, that gives me the opportunity to be bringing my wonky block back into square. So every third or fourth piece, I just find a line and then I'll go ahead and cut it square this way. I still have plenty of scrap I can sew on later, but that actually is helping me control it back down. And then if you get confused, where are we at? I've got one, two solids around the outside, so it's time for the prints again. This guy's trapped in here. So I want to make sure I don't use either of these two again in this particular block. So I'm going to come over to my wall. I'm going to find one that didn't fall on the floor, which means I didn't use it yet, which is great for that kind of organization. And we're just going to sew it on. And you can probably assume that this is going to go like this all afternoon. We're just going to add a piece and press it and trim it and add a piece and press it and trim it. So what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to bounce into caffeinated mode and put the rest of the square together so I can show you how all of the squares come together and then we're going to finish today's video talking all about the quilting. I'll be right back. Welcome back everybody. You can see that I've completed the construction or at least the base construction, the framework to my cabin here. And I want to point out that I've gone ahead and left a lot of these outside strips extra wide and I did it in all of my four pieces, right? So let's start putting this back together in a possible layout. And what I'm going to start doing now is, well, this is where me as a designer wrestles with me as a hyperactive sewer. I want to sew all the blocks together immediately to make it look awesome. And I do that, but I'm going to remind you to go ahead and design all of your quilt first before you go to this next step, please. So you know where all your big blocks and small blocks are going to lay out. It'll make life easier. But this is how we join them all together because not every block is going to be the same size. So what I first do is I just put them on the table and I ha feel good about them. And then what I want to do is I'm going to create this seam across here. So what I'm going to first do is trim these down. They can be trimmed down a little wonky. They can be trimmed down square if you wish. Let me slide these out of the way a little bit. 
I'm just shaving them down to put them right back together with a nice square edge. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I line up this bottom corner, but I can see that this is gonna be trimmed down as well. So I'm just making sure I have plenty. Here we go, my right sides together to the machine. So I'm kind of building these blocks back together like we build quilts in rows and in columns. But because things are different sizes, we're going to get creative here in a few seconds. So our first one goes back together like this. Of course, I'm going to want to press that open. Excuse me, press it, not open, just press it. Here. And then before I go any further, I want to square this up right there. So now I can actually use the seam that I just created. I don't have to make it square, but I'm going to because we're talking about the basics. So here we go. And you can see I'm going to cut deep into the purple, even though I was just shaving that yellow. And that's OK, because that's where a lot of the character comes back in. As a nice alignment mark, I found that line on the seam allowance again. And I'm going to keep cutting through there like that. Now this one was right here. These two, just to double check, are going to fit back together like this. So now I need to trim and trim here. Just creating a straight line for our piecing. Doesn't have to be square to the block. OK. Oh. Probably trying to go a little bit too fast for us here, but I so want to show you the next step. So here we go. Right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now as this comes back in together, I'm going to need to square that edge again. So let's just make sure we don't cut into anything we don't want. And before I square it, sorry, I must press it because we want it to be crisp. OK, now we're ready to square. This time using that joining seam allowance to make sure Want to make sure we cut all the way through there. I'm also looking at this edge to make sure I'm staying nice and straight. That'll prevent any puckers in our patchwork later on. OK, this is going to come back together here. Now, at the moment, I do not want to line up that gray. That just looks like it's going to be too obvious, even though it does nice things for me out here. So we're just going to shift this around a little bit. If I wanted to line it up perfect, this would be the perfect lineup where it kind of does the checkerboard, not this lineup. So we can do this, but I'm just going to cheat it down a little way so that I'm maximizing the amount of fabric I've used. Fold it over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and put these four squares technically all together and show you at the quilt what it looks like. This was really one of these projects I got lost in. Spent a few days enjoying the design work because I was just taking my time in my sewing room and had so much fun. Like I said, I really enjoyed the uniqueness of each seam allowance I was creating. Let me just press this real quick one last time. And like I was trying to point out, I made all of my individual squares first before I started making these blocks to put together in the quilt. So I had the best variety and best layout. These four blocks are a very basic construction. They use just one strip of each of the solids and one strip of each of the prints. But now follow me closely as I dive into the quilt. I wanted to again point out that this square is not the same size as all of the squares. So once you get your squares made, you will need to add on an extra print piece in some of these locations here where you can come back in and add an extra one of those prints to do the fill in between where this square and this bigger square 
had to fit back together. You can also see I used some smaller squares. Those were all created by using the scraps from the little scraps that were created and making the big squares. But it was a great fill in between this cabin and this cabin. Maybe these are the little garages and barns parked around the backyards in the field of cabins, right? And like I said, in putting it all together, playing with the layout, I also created some uniqueness in each of the cabins themselves. So for example, this particular one, you can see I actually used the same solids on both sides, where in the example I showed you, I used a different color on both sides. So believe it or not, if you look deep, deep, deep into the quilt, I'll even get out of the way a little bit, you can see that there's a lot of variety in the blocks, there's a lot of variety in the scale and the color and the movement, and your final cherry on the top is putting in your machine quilting. If you're not much of a free motion machine quilter, it's a great place to just do some stitch in the ditch, right? Because these blocks are all joined. These ones here and these ones here are all joined along these major seams, these major highways. And those are great places for your stitch in the ditch style quilting or feed dogs up quilting. But what I wanted to do is do some free motion. So I drew some circles in the center of my cabins, as you can see. Those were kind of my neutral zones. And then I tried to do some fun feathers and fun swirls just to bring the whole neighborhood together as I made my fun free piece log cabins here. Boy, I told you a couple times, I so enjoyed the uniqueness of this project. I hope you enjoyed the construction. Please do not get too overwhelmed with the fact that there are no measurements required. This is a great place for you to just be free and to practice and take it slow and enjoy. We'll catch you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.